All right, let's look at question 12, another test-like question. Which of the following statements most accurately describes the silver trade in the period from 1450 to 1750? So take a minute, look at that map, and see which answer you will choose. All right, so our answer is gonna be Chinese demand for silver dro drove the trade. As you can see, the giant arrows are heading into China. All of the arrows are pointing to China. And so they are driving this trade. What they need, what they're wanting, uh, everyone is rushing to provide. And so that is going to drive it. Uh, it was the world's largest economy at that time, but they did not have precious metal res you know, re resources. Um, they had no way to get those things. And so in order for them to keep their economy stable, they needed these precious metals and they needed other people to bring them in. And so that is what drove this trade. So what is one consequence? And remember consequences, as I said earlier, they could be positive or they can be negative. And so what is one consequence of the silver trade in this period? Again, take a moment to answer this question and then we will look at it together. All right, answer choice B is going to be the correct answer. A global trade system develops the first between all major centers of civilization. It's the first time that the Western and Eastern hemispheres are linked in a trade network. You can see that circle on the map that it basically covers every single one of our eight um, civilizations that we were talking about at the beginning. It goes through everything. It goes through all of those groups. And it's the first time that that is opened up and it's something that is going to continue and um, influence things from this point on.